My name is Megan, and this is my dad, Jim. Hello. And this week, we'll be talking about music. So to start off with, what kinds or genres of music do you like? Oh, so I think it's, to me, it's a uh, broad, but I don't think it really is to most people. So I listen to folk music, uh, traditional and modern bluegrass music, um, an occasional classical piece. What are your favorite musical groups or bands now? And which groups did you like as a teenager? Oh, let me start with the teenager. Okay. So I don't think we, th I thought as much about music back then, but one uh, band we spent a lot of time, well, it's a couple of bands we listened to a lot, would have been uh, the Beach Boys because just the sheer joy of it all. And then uh, we listened to Queen Night at an Opera uh, because it was uh, really cool, complicated music without any synthesizers. I had a great friend who uh, was a big Led Zeppelin fan and it was lost on me, but we listened to a lot of that. <laughs> Now, but oh, current bands. Um, with vocals, I like Lake, Lake Street Dive a lot. And then um, a little bluegrass duo called um, Mandolin Orange. Um, what is one of your favorite songs? It could be your favorite song of the moment, because I feel like that's a hard question. Yeah, so... The one that probably moves me the most is Pictures in a Frame. Yeah. Oh, are you <laughs> going to cry? Which is okay. Yeah. <laughs> Can I ask how it makes you feel? Um, it's just very, it attaches to me. Um, I think about it, how it affects me and how much I love my wife. And do you personally like to sing? Oh, I like to sing. I don't, I haven't really sung in a long time, so I feel like I don't have the breath support to sing. Uh, Mom says, you used to be a good singer. <laughs> <laughs> she, but I'm not now. <laughs> she does say that. Um, do you ever like to sing to yourself? Yes. Without any critique from, from your spouse? Yes. <laughs> so I, um... I sing, nowadays I tend to sing to myself, uh, sometimes sing the lyrics that are associated with songs that I play where I have no intention of being the singer, but just to have a better sense of how the music relates to the lyrics. All right. And have you ever sung in public or been part of a choir? The last public choir I was in was in fifth or sixth grade. Ah. <laughs> Do you play any instruments? And if so, which ones? Okay. So um, when I was in high school and early college, I played saxophone. Before that, I played clarinet. So if you are wanting to play saxophone, take up the clarinet first and keep practicing it because it will help you long term. I didn't listen. <laughs> uh, I was, I played in a band and in a jazz band and um, that was a lot of fun. I think that's when I was the most skilled. Now I play uh, the banjo a lot and I play the Irish tin whistle and then I'll play the piano. I had lessons in piano uh, when I was six to eight years old. And I play now to sort of um, help me think about music and just for fun. Can you show us the tin whistle and maybe even play something? Okay. So this is the uh, tin whistle. It's about as simple as you can get. It only has a... Uh, Make a, sure to hold it high oh yeah. enough. It only has a few holes in it. So that means that this is actually only plays in the key of D and G, uh, which is good for 
if you want to uh, think about melodies and you have, you're trying to pick out melodies, there aren't many options. So it makes it easier to pick out a melody. But that said, I'm actually going to look at some music. Okay. <laughs> so. include singing or instruments or do you ever hear music in your daily life that isn't like specifically a recorded song oh okay so first do I need lyrics I like actually instrumental and lyrics I think there are to me music can actually uh, add enjoyment either through just the lyrics. It can be a great story. It can be a way of conveying a message. It can bring up uh, emotions just through the, the lyrics. Um, I like instrumental music because there's sometimes there's, uh, it's just amazing how skilled the musicians are or uh, how creative the composers were. I mean, there's, there's, Lots to music that I think can excite you. Great. And when and where do you listen to music? And is it part of your daily routine? So it's, it is part of my routine. I wake up early in the morning and I listen while I do things like empty the dishwasher before I make breakfast in the morning. I listen when I'm reading the newspaper. I don't listen to music when uh, I'm doing something that takes Concentration, I need to really focus. Have you ever been to a concert? I've been to a lot, well, a handful of small concerts, like mm -hmm. in small venues. Uh, I've been to very, very few big stadium concerts. Um, the last big stadium concert, and one of the few was Elton John. Really? Back in uh, probably in 1990. And then uh, I think I can't remember the name of the other ones. Yeah. <laughs> but I, we, we tend to go to uh, small venue folk singers. Yes. All right. If you were given free tickets and you could go to any concert and there weren't limitations of the pandemic, who would you want to say? Oh. Hmm. You know, I think uh, there's, there's a person called Dom Flemont. He's, uh, uh, he's called the American song, he called, bills himself as the American songster. He was in, um, a band whose name I always mess up, the Carolina... Oh, the Carolina Chocolate Drops? Yes. And um, he is, I saw an interview with him, and he plays uh, guitar and a series of uh, uh, banjos, but it's, it's not, it doesn't fit into sort of a bluegrass genre or a jazz genre. It's more true... Uh, ultra-traditional black cowboy music, I would guess. And he just sounds uh, fascinating about what he does. And um, about a year and a half ago, I saw a poster and I thought, who is this? And then I saw the, saw the interview and I thought, I would love to go see, see Dom Flemons. All right. Well, I'll remember that for <laughs> yes, birthdays yes. or or something like yeah. that. Okay. Do you ever enjoy listening to music in a language you do not speak? Oh, there's some, I don't seek it out, but there are some songs that just sort of are captivating regardless of the language. And just that you get a sense of the, from the way the lyrics are delivered and the music around it, what it means. Yes. Yeah. And so, yes. 
Okay. Yeah, like I know I enjoy songs, some specific songs in Korean and French, and those are not languages that I know at all. Yes. But they just sound very pretty. Mm -hmm. We're shifting gears now. Do you like to dance? I kind of enjoy dancing. I'm not very good at it. All right. What kinds of music do you dance to? Oh, I would say it would be uh, rock music of up to like 2000, I would say. But we only dance at weddings and things like that. Yeah. And would you say you have rhythm? I have rhythm, but I don't have coordination. So the, my mind is not connected with my body as well as I'd like. I feel the same way, <laughs> and since we're related, I think it's your fault. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. Um, okay, this is my final question. Oh. Are you ready? Yes. Okay. So this is a bit of a catch-all question. So tell me a fun fact about music. So, um, for example... Is there something about your musical culture that you'd want to share with me? Or since we have the same, or at least a similar musical culture, is there something you know about music? So musical history, instruments, how music works that you want to teach me? Oh, so I'm, I'm a biochemist by training and I'm fascinated that Across cultures, we have some similarity in what sounds good to us. So, uh, uh, why do we like chords that are a first, a third, and a fifth? So, there has to be uh, some reason why that, uh, some biological reason why that drives us. So, uh, I don't understand it completely, but I do. It makes sense in that if you uh, had a note that you wanted to put the wave in a space, there's, let's say you do a C, three of them will fit here. An E, which is the third, four will fit. A G, five will fit. So I don't know for certain this is true, but you can sort of think of our inner ears as having these little hairs that are attached to the neurons. I know that part's true. And so, the, so when you excite those based on the length of those hairs, a first, a third, and a fifth are exciting the same little hairs in your ears. And I think that's, there's something linked to that that is why we all like first, thirds, and fifths. The other thing I like along those lines is there's beautiful songs that follow those rules, but there's great things that don't follow those rules. Like a, in blues, you play a third and a flatted third. And if you hear that, it's clearly the blues. And so there's something about that. And uh, then one of the things about music that's neat is the tension that builds up. You feel like uh, something's beautiful but not quite right, and then it resolves. And that's, again, along those sort of similar lines, a note that doesn't belong in a scale. So it's, it's, it's th those sorts of things fascinate me. And it's something I didn't think about when I was young, but I try and think about it in the music I play now. Great. Thank you for sharing that with me. <laughs> You're welcome. Um, and this is the end, so thank you for talking with me. This was fun. This was really fun. And... Thank you all for listening and for giving us the opportunity to talk about music in this way um, because it's been really fun and I hope that you all have really great conversations with each other about the music that you enjoy. All right, bye. Bye.